saying that, mind, right? Yes. Um, where does the the uh, the um, interest in matcha come in? Is that when you traveled to Japan? Yeah, I went to Japan first when I was seventeen. I was on a stu- part of that when I was in that uh, round the world student exchange mm-hmm. program, and I lived with Japanese families. Uh, first one was outside of Tokyo. This was 1959 when Japan was a very different place. And the family that I lived with, uh, there was supposed to be a, a student there that's, that was studying English, but we had no language in common. But the second night I was there, the mother of the family uh, indicated she wanted to take me next door to her neighbor who was a practitioner of tea ceremony. And so the three of us sat around and this woman made matcha. And uh, first of all, I was blown away by the color of mm. matcha. I'd never seen th- that vibrant green was just amazing. Mm-hmm. And then also the bamboo whisk that's used to whisk matcha in a bowl. It's just a marvel Beautiful. of Japanese craftsmanship I was fascinated with. So um, I, I, in the 1970s, I was going to Japan um, fairly regularly. And whenever I'd go, I'd bring matcha back and turn people onto it. Nobody that I knew had ever experienced it or knew anything about it. Uh-huh. And somewhere in the, I think it was in the 19, late 1980s, 1990s, I tried to sell matcha through my website. I imported it. I found a company that I could get it from in Japan, but it was way ahead of its time, you know, so yeah. uh, people weren't ready for it. And then, uh, you know, I was amazed to see matcha becoming Popular Just year. one of the many things. One of the many things that I was way ahead of. Talk about all the time. However, I was very disappointed that the most of the matcha that I saw here was really inferior because um, matcha is so it's such a fine powder that it oxidizes mm-hmm. really quickly. And when it oxidizes, it loses that bright green color. It becomes bitter. It's not pleasant. And most of what I saw available here was that way. So I was determined to see if uh, I could make really good matcha available. So I founded a company, I managed to get the URL matcha.com, which was mm-hmm. a big score. Yeah, that and, is. And uh, made a connection with a traditional matcha producer in Japan. And we import and sell, I think, some of the best matcha you can get. Yeah. And by the way, we can offer, I, I can offer your listeners a discount. Oh, cool. So it's matcha.com is the company, the company's matcha kari. And if they use the discount code rich15, all right. They will get it. That's very our, generous. Our Thank you. Matcha. But matcha is, you know, it's it's the only form of tea that in which you consume the whole leaf. Mm-hmm. And it's got a higher content of antioxidants and flavor compounds and other healthful compounds. And some of this is because of the unusual way that the leaves are grown. Uh, in the last three weeks before harvest, they're grown under a very heavy shade cloth, 90% shade cloth. And in response to that, absence of light, the leaves grow bigger and thinner and produce more chlorophyll, which is why it's so bright green and more L-theanine, which is the calming compound that moderates Mm -hmm. the caffeine and antioxidants and other good things. So I think for all those reasons, matcha is is one of the most healthful forms of tea out there. Yeah, I love it. Um, It does give you a little bit of a boost, but it's kind of a calm energy and it sustains itself Very different from coffee. And the color is magical. It's magical. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Tastes great. Um, but I know well the difference between a fine matcha and what you typically see. It's a much darker color. You can darker tell it's or been, yellowish. You could tell. Yeah, you could tell it's been oxidized. And I see this with a lot of these, you know, quote unquote superfood products. The mm-hmm. more money there is to be made. Um, with the lack of kind of quality control or regulation yeah. in this space. You know, you go whether it's moringa yep. or you know whatever it is, kamu kamu, whatever you're trying to get. It's really hard to f- know like what's the good stuff and what's you know. Been. Yeah, and if you've had no experience of the good stuff, you don't you don't know. Right, and you don't know how it's harvested, right. how it's grown, how it's picked, how it's stored, yeah, how it's all shipped. That. All of those things play into yeah. whether or not it's maintaining you know the qualities f- that you're purchasing it for. And most most of these products are not good for that reason. 